Western New York and the city of Buffalo offer some amazing freshwater opportunities in the spring and great access to a ton of fishy water, including two great lakes. On this trip, we will be trolling Lake Ontario for salmon and lake trout, but up first, we hit Lake Erie to explore its phenomenal smallmouth bass fishery. Most anglers would agree that Lake Erie has the best smallmouth bass fishing in the world, with big numbers and the potential for some true monsters. Hey guys, welcome to On The Water TV. Chris Megan, publisher with On The Water Magazine, today with Captain Terry Jones. Cap, we're fishing Lake Erie. I've always wanted to do this. I heard this is one of the most diverse fisheries in the entire country, maybe the world, as far as the different opportunities you have on Lake Erie. Where are we heading out to? Well, we're coming out of the Buffalo Harbor, is where we're going, and we're gonna run down the shoreline to the Hamburg shoreline, which is some of the best spawning areas for the smallmouth. We're gonna be fishing transition points, islands, to shallow water, and we're gonna we're just gonna how go out water, and have fun. How much water are we gonna be in when we fish? Um, if we fish out deep, we're gonna be fishing anywhere from 24 to about 32 feet of water. And these fish are sitting right on the bottom. They're laying tight to the bottom right now. It's cold. I didn't realize that we'd be taking off right underneath the Buffalo skyline here with it over our shoulder. This area is pretty unique. The Buffalo was built on the water. Yeah. You know, the Erie, Erie Canal and everything sure. started everything right here. Well, these were all industrial cities that transportation, industry, everything was through the river. I've been guiding on Erie for about 20 years. I, I fished it my whole life. I grew up as a kid walking the shorelines along here. And uh, I'm so very fortunate to live in this area to have the smallmouth and the fishing that we have. Hey, we're going to run out right now. How far are we making a run? You said about seven or eight miles? About seven, eight miles we'll run down, down the shoreline. We'll look for some fish getting ready to move into spawn. We'll go catch some big smallmouth. I imagine with that 225 Honda, this boat gets up and moves, huh? Giddy up. Right, Giddy up. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So I saw that we just went over a couple of pieces of uh, structure there. Yeah, see we're marking fish right here. Yeah, right, right there on the bottom. We got a little bit of an east wind right now, but it's not that bad. It feels like it's five to 10. Come on, Chris, let's get uh, it. All right, let's do it. I'm excited, <laughs> I'm real excited. So you got one dragon here already, Cap? Mm hmm So we're just dropping this back. Just throw it back. Let it drift right behind us. All right, Chris, how I do it. Here, let me, here we go, fish on. <laughs> how about that, Chris? Don't take long on Lake Erie. It does not, huh? Look at that cap. Not bad, first cast of the day. Now that's usually either the kiss of death or. You are absolutely right. You know? Look at that cap, huh? Yeah, the poor boy's too. So we just got out of here. Captain Terry Jones, first cast, dropped it over. We were rigging up one of the other rods, and bam, already on. As you'll see through the day as it progresses, see how light, lightly colored out? Yeah. They're just moving in now. Uh, so, beautiful. go tell them we're here. First fish of the day. We got to start, Chris. Yeah, we did. Just throw it back out and let it drag. And you said we're in about 20 feet of water here? We're at about 24 to 26 feet of water. We're fishing tube jigs. Three-eighths ounce. Oh, I thought I almost had another uh, one there, you know Chris, coming over the structure. <laughs> just throwing it out there and letting it drag. The, the fish are real lethargic right now. So they're laying tight to the bottom. They're looking for something to come by their mouth. So that's what we're doing. We're, we're fishing hard bottoms. We're looking for rock. We're looking for gravel. We're in the pre-spawn here. You've dropped back about 50 feet. Yeah, at, at least. I noticed on the way out, Cap, you had quite a few marks there. Yeah, uh, I've been fishing a long time. <laughs> I know, noticed so a lot of those. areas, you know. If it's you can always take them off, you can't put them back. There we go. There you, oh, oh, wait a minute, that might have been the bottom. It's okay. Got to be close to the bottom, that's exactly where they are. So, I mean, we got a good chance. There we go, here we are. <laughs> that was the fish I just had. I on know, the thank you. You're, you're trying to make me look good. <laughs> you shook that fish right off for me, <laughs> didn't you? And what's the biggest you've had out here? Uh, we've caught fish over seven. <laughs> Last year, at least 10 fish, way over six. Jeez. No. Look at that See fish. See the different color? Look at that. Nice. Oh, is that beautiful, huh? Oh you know what, Chris, the way you did that, you can work for me any day. <laughs> <laughs> That's about the average size fish we catch this time of the year. 
Jimmy Fee, one of our editors, was up here, and he fisted. He said, really, Chris, it is the best place I've ever fished for smallies. Terry, we just picked up your second fish in all of about five minutes. I don't think you've cast a third time yet, have you? No, not yet. We'll, we'll get another one. <laughs> And right now we're dragging tube jigs that are just imitating the uh, gobies, a fish that was kind of invasive to the uh, to the area, but to help smallmouth fish. Made them fat compared to other areas. Oh, we we'll catch a lot, I'll but tell you they're what. huge. They're, These are they are beautiful. big and fat. I can feel the side of this fish is nice and cool. This one's been up a little bit more. I, I start, saw that. I see, saw he's a little bit prettier. Of, yeah, I saw prettier. some of the color in there. Let's get him back in the water. When you come back, hopefully it's my turn. look over my left shoulder and all along this side we have an ice pack. Terry was telling me earlier that some seasons they never get any ice. This year they had 48 inches across the entire thing. They had a helicopter that went all the way out to different points, drilled down, and every point they found they averaged 48 inches of ice. You can see here we are now, May 8th, May 9th, kind of what's left of it now which is breaking up. Once they head downstream, heading towards uh, Ontario, pretty wild though. Out here, I'm gonna say mid-spring, and you have this much ice still left. Captain and I made a run inside, see if we might get some of these fish that we enticed. We came up on one of our buddy boats here, Mark Davis of uh, Big Water Adventures, and he tied into some really nice walleye. If you can say cookie cutter 12 pound walleye, <laughs> he had two of them. Oh my gosh. Ain't that some? Oh my gosh. He got them on the tubes too, got so. on tube jigs, yeah. Heading back up, feels like the wind's picking up. Will that hurt the drift at all? Or? I would much rather have wind and oh, no wind. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Some of the worst fishing on Lake Erie is when you have no wind at all. When we have wind like this, it congregates the fish up on structure. Let's see if we can't pick up a couple more smallmouth and maybe a big walleye. So let's get after it. All right, wow. We just made that move again. We came back in. We've been working inside just to see if any of these fish had actually moved up on the flats. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'll clear it. Nice, nice fish, Chris. Good job. Beautiful fish. Yeah, they're all good. Oh, beautiful, huh? Nice fish. Nice fish. Chris. Look at that. That guy's in that ones. probably uh, two and a half, three pound class, yep. but. Way to go, friend. <laughs> <Yeah. About laughs> Good job, huh? man. I'm on the board. Yeah. Seems like our baits are lifting up a little bit off the bottom. Yeah, with that wind picking up, you're gonna try to slow us down a little, Cap? Yeah, I am. Let's try this drift sock. Slow Let's us down it. a little bit, give us a little bit more bottom time. Exactly. When do you find that these fish are gonna stage up to when they actually make the break in? Is there a water temperature that they actually start to make the move? No, as soon as the ice comes out, I've always been able to catch fish. As soon as I can get out here. Because they're active, they're hungry, you're starting to see more bait. Now, how about during the spawn? Anyone come in there and fish it, or they leave them alone for the most part? I got a fish. There's some good fish, too. Well, they keep it a nice bed. All right, you got a butt right in the corner, so I'm just gonna come right in. That's a beautiful fish. Wow. Is that beautiful? Look at the gut on this thing. This guy's gotta be approaching five. You know what, now you know what I say, I'm so very fortunate to live oh, to this town. You really, really are. To think, and I had no idea until a couple years ago, I had heard the stories about the big smallies up this way, but I wasn't thinking uh, this size. So these things must be just be gorging on Goby still, yeah. huh? Yep. You guys, want Lake Erie, world class. Smalley fish with Captain Terry Jones. Terry, you showed me the way it's supposed to be done today, yeah, huh? Well, I got a little more experience than you. <laughs> well, I'm gonna get this guy back in the water. These new trolling motors, they're unbelievable. We can Isn't anchor right amazing? on the fish. Yeah. Well, I saw you fishing the uh, Quantum X out there, huh? Yeah, very nice outfit. It performs extremely well. Uh, I'm, I'm real happy on it. Especially, see this fish I got right here? See how well it works? It's, uh, 
I think it's a fish <laughs> magnet is what I'm thinking right now. One time. Back fish, on yep, double. Double header, Chris. Back in the game. Yeah, there we go. I think we got a little pile of them there. Yeah. Oh, this guy nice looks fish. a little better, too. But that's three fish in the last two minutes there. Well, you get a picture of us with a nice double? Yeah, yeah. we do. Bring this guy right up. Okay. There he is, huh? Beautiful nice. fish. Nice. Well, Cap, that's how you end the day, huh? Yeah. Is that unbelievable? We've had a great day out here fishing with Captain Terry Jones. Terry, the name of your group again? First Class Bass Charters. I'll tell you what, if you want to get up here, have an incredible time, fishing capital of the world for smallies, they're saying. Awesome. Right underneath the Buffalo skyline off my right shoulder here, guys. These have been typical of what we've been getting all day long. Just beautiful fish, big, healthy four plus pound fish. Nice. Guys, if you'd like to learn more about today's show, log on to onthewater.com. From Terry Jones and Chris Megan, thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you, hopefully, on the water. Yeah, thanks. After releasing two healthy smallmouths, Terry and I headed back toward the Buffalo skyline to haul the boat and get ready for day two. Stay tuned. Tomorrow we'll gear up for Lake Ontario trout using the popular and productive method of trolling with downriggers. Some nice marks down there on the bottom. Seems like it's a little bit bigger of a fish. Western New York offers some of the most diverse freshwater fishing in the U.S. and plenty of opportunities for big fish. After a day of world-class smallmouth fishing with Terry Jones, we drove a few miles north to Wilson Harbor in Niagara County, where we met up with Danny Evans of Lone Wolf Sport Fishing Charters to target the various salmon species inhabiting the depths of Lake Ontario. Welcome to today's show of On The Water Magazine's Angling Adventures. We're up on Lake Ontario. We just left Wilson Marina. We'll be fishing today on board the Lone Wolf Sport Fishing Charters with Captain Danny Evans. I'm going to send it up to Danny. He's going to go over the fish we're going to be catching, but I know there's all types of trout, salmon, and even smallmouth bass. Hang with us, guys. It's going to be a great show. We're running real tight water today, anywhere from 8 to 20 feet of water. We'll be fishing primarily stick baits. So Taz and I right now are just letting out our stick baits. We're gonna hook them up on our planer boards here on these little black releases. And then that way we can cover a wider spread of water and really dial in where these fish are hanging out today. How many lines you running? Just six. Just a six, okay. Now what I'm doing is some more traditional Great Lakes style of fishing, running a downrigger, which is basically a large electric motor with a boom and a heavy weight on it. We'll look at our graph, see where our target species are hanging out. Attach our fishing line to this release right there that'll pop when a fish hits it. And then on our graph here, I'm just gonna run the ball down to our target depth. So what will happen when we know we have a bite on these, a fish will hit, hit the lure, pop the release, this rod will bounce down and stand right up because there's no tension on it anymore and we run down and reel down to the fish. And the trout, they all got real soft mouths, baby them, you know. No setting the hook today either. We're already going three miles an hour. Don't, don't set the hook. Fish on. Who's up? All right. Good fish. Fish Dave Fox is fighting it from Flambo. Fish taking line, giving Dave a workout. That's right. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Look at that. Yeah. And you have another line behind it, too. Little coho? Got a coho salmon. So we just picked up uh, first coho salmon. 
We just made a move inside shallow there. We went a little, lightened it up a little, and now we got a coho salmon here. I've seen the deck a couple of times. Oh, he's a live one, man. <laughs> We're gonna pop this guy back in. He'll still swim. Geologically, you can just look at your shoreline and kind of tell what kind of structure we got going yep. on underneath the boat. You get in an area here where it's all bluffed out, you know that you're getting to a softer bottom. Browns typically like the little bit more stained water you're gonna find in, in front of a softer bottom. It's gonna be a little bit warmer. Cohos typically like the little bit cleaner water along the rock bottom. Tyler, it seems like all the brown trout come from inside here. Uh, they, you know? They push tighter to the beach. They're trying to get in the warmest water they can find. Yeah, okay. And they're also keying in on the bait. We have the potential today to catch uh, Chinook salmon in here, coho salmon. There is uh, a few Atlantic salmon showing up to get into the trout. And uh, this early, early in the season, you have the potential of catching northern pike in yeah. here. Uh, you know, everything's hanging out on the beach. It's a really diverse fishery. I didn't suspect that. Might have sped it. Is he there? Uh, yep. Here we go. Nice. As you can see over my right shoulder here, we're real tight to shore. Here we are in Lake Ontario. It almost kind of reminds you of fishing down on the Cape, where, you, you know, you here don't take go. the got boat another fish on here. Another fish. David, get in there. Here, I got a task. So we're double up, Dave Faulkner's on a fish on the right. Tight, tripled up. Who, who wants it? That's you, Cap. All right, this is weird. I don't really know what to do with the fishing rod in my hand. I'm used to pointing and correcting and yelling. Yelling at people. <laughs> Got a brown there. We'll go two. Double. Yeah. Look at this, huh? Atta boy. Look at that. Nice start, guys. We've got a couple one and two year old browns there. All right, well, all of a sudden, just all hell broke loose. That's what it's like when you're trolling. We just tripled up here, trolling the shoreline about seven foot of water. We switched over to some smaller baits, and we tripled up. We got a couple two year old lake colored up browns. They're uh, more silver than when you see them in the fall where they get the red dots around the black, black spots. So we're going to uh, get these two back in the water so they can grow a little older. Guys, you're watching On The Water TV, fishing with Lone Wolf Sport Fishing Charters on Lake Ontario. All right, well, all of a sudden, just all hell broke loose. That's what it's like when you're trolling. Well, we just tripled up here, trolling the shoreline about seven foot of water. We got a couple two-year-old browns. We're going to uh, get these two back in the water. What we're running for gear today is uh, 30 wide uh, Daiwa Saltese Reel. We love it. Downrigger fishing because it's got a super high gear ratio. I'm out here every day with clients charter fish and it is what it is. People are all different skill levels. So we run a real light rod. That way very clients forgiving. can't, you know, put too much pressure on trout unless you hook them in the bone. They got very soft mouths. So just right to that swivel and yeah. then pick the yeah. rod tip up. Here we go, Cap. We loosen that drag. Here we go. Guys, we got a one-year-old brown trout. We're gonna let this guy get a little bit bigger. We're gonna get him back in the water. Before it's too late, let's go ahead and toss him back in, Cap. That last fish that just came up, I know caught this up when he hit the deck. This is the goby we're talking about, huh? Uh, another invasive species that has gotten into the Great Lakes system through ballast on freighters coming in. The round goby has become one of the main forage fish for smallmouth, brown trout, lake trout, even sometimes the cohos when they're in this close. Well, and, the uh, Goldies as well? I absolutely, yeah, and uh, one of those browns we just caught just popped up this partially digested round goby. We were throwing some tube jigs, and I noticed that the tube, you get the big weight in the front, it's yeah. kind of mimicking the, the goby in here, absolutely. and the same kind and of color pattern coming Match down. the hatch, it's all about that. A goby colored tube is prime time. One of the negative sides of them is they, they eat a lot of eggs, so when the lake perch, the yellow perch are in here trying to spawn, oh, okay. they'll, they'll eat I eggs. I didn't know that. Yeah. So they'll keep those numbers down that right. way. But as far as a forage fish, everything eats. Everything them. eats. Even the perch eat them. So. Wow. We just uh, picked up from doing the shoreline gig, trolling in tight for the brown cohos. Got some smallies as well. We're gonna run out to a little bit deeper water, where hopefully pick up some lake trout as well, and possibly a king.
guys, we just made a move right now. We were pounding the shore along the uh, southern side of Lake Ontario. We just moved out about two miles. What we're gonna do is set up for a lake trout, see if we can't get some rigs in, drop down on the bottom, and start trolling along the bottom now, see if we can't pick up some lake trout. What's nice about these electronic down riggers, you can actually go ahead and preset the depth on it. Right now he's got it set for 38 feet. We're in about 41 feet of water, so he's literally right off the bottom at 38 feet down. There's some nice marks down there on the bottom. Yep, well, who's up? Kind of boy. Nice job. All right. Thank you. Yeah, stick oh, feet. Stick feet. Anyway. Well, we just made a move about two miles out. Just literally got the spread set up. And uh, see, we have five different colors of lead core. And then on my left side here, I got an indication, which is really cool. The depth mark. So right now I'm at 160. Seems like it's a little bit bigger of a fish. What do you think, Tad? If you were betting, man, what do we got? You got yourself a lake trout. All right, well, right now I'm right at 100. It's funny, I'm just off the back, but gives you a little bit of an idea of how deep we are now compared to where we were fishing. We're in about 40 feet of water. We got color, we got nice color. Big lake trout. Big laker, I'm gonna pull him real steady, don't wanna pop him. One more crank and he's you. Coming right up now. Coming right in now. Oh, beautiful, huh? Look at that. Just a couple minutes into it. Taz, is that gorgeous? Uh, average, uh, we're looking at a 15, 16 pound lake trout there. Boy, Cap, we didn't get out of here not 10 minutes. We've got the, sit the spread set up. We've got a beautiful lake trout. Look at the size of this thing, 15 pounds. You're holding on to about a 15-year-old lake trout. Wow, huh? Been swimming around here quite a while. Now, he'll make it back there pretty healthy right oh, now, yeah. coming up oh, from 40 feet. Very hardy yeah. fish. Very yeah. hardy. Guys, we just moved out about two miles. We set the spread up. One of the rods went down. We were fishing about 40 feet of water. This fish hit somewhere in the 30 feet down and it's a beautiful 15 pound laker. Guys fishing long wolf sport fishing charters, Lake Ontario. Big 15 pound laker ready to go back in. Let's get him in. Oh, we hadn't been out here 10 minutes, set the spread up and bam, that was on. Nice fish guys, fishing long wolf sport fishing charters. Captain Danny Evans and his mate Taz. Great time out here. For more information on fish in western New York and the Great Lakes, visit onthewater.com and thanks for tuning in.